Americans, we're out here at the Phillips Resident. We were out here last week for Facebook Live, if you guys didn't catch it. Um, we're going to review a little bit of what we did out here for Phase 2 of the Phillips Project. It was the backyard. So if you notice, they had a new pool installed. This wasn't here last time. Brand new, beautiful pool by John Clarkson Pools. They're now installing some, um, some lighting on the screen enclosures, which is going to be super cool. But out here, we've got a really tropical feel landscape. We've installed these four beautiful queen palms. Um, we also, uh, we're going to put some bottle brush. We actually only put one bottle brush because as you can see, the neighbor actually has their own bottle brush trees, which kind of gives us a backdrop. It's actually landscaping in the other person's yard that kind of enhances this landscape as well. It sets off nicely the crepe myrtles with the yellow sunshine ligustrum, and then a little pop of blue there with the blue days. But really wanted a big tropical feel back here in the backyard. Put in brand new sod. <laughs> I guess we have some volume issues with the, uh, with the uh, guys back there drilling, but we'll work through it. So we've also got some crow in, some mammy crow in, some Hawaiian Thai plants, red sisters, some hibiscus. We did also incorporate one weeping bottle brush here, guys, because we don't have any of the bottle brush that we had over there. This kind of mimics the weeping bottle brush we have installed up in the front yard as well, so we kind of tied in that front yard as well with it. But as you can see, it's a really tropical, colorful feel. Um, the, they are so happy, and we'll kind of show you what's going on in the front in just a moment. With our tropical look with our sago palms and our uh, pygmy date palms, or robolinis, we were kind of missing something on this corner that I didn't initially put in there. This is a Eutropha, it's a, a really pretty tropical plant, it's evergreen, so it stays green year round. Really pretty bright red flowers for hummingbirds and butterflies, but it will fill this corner nicely, almost like a crepe myrtle. But this is my plant that I brought from home to give to them, to kind of fill in this nice little area. I was, as I was telling Jason on Thursday, I'm downsizing my plant collection, so I've been handing off a couple to some of my clients so that I can actually have it in landscape for years to come. So this is the front yard. Again, we did this in the fall in October. Everything has grown in nicely, lots of color. Uh, we did add a little bit more blue days to this sago palm. And actually we're gonna take the sago palms uh, out in phase two, but they actually flushed out nicely. So the Phillips uh, said, go ahead and just keep them. Let's just go ahead and enhance it with a little ring of blue days. And you'll see what happens with that blue days like that one we just planted. This is from last October. See how much fuller it gets? So it'll fill in and make a nice little ring around this weeping bottle brush. And I was kind of hoping this would be blooming. I got a little bit of blooms up here. I don't know if John can get that in the, the picture, but we got a little bit. So again, that's a hummingbird and butterfly attractor. So a real pretty plant, but yeah, lots of color. We want to incorporate a little bit of purple with the, it goes against that green nicely. And then a pop of the sunshine ligustrum. Right in this little area here, we'd actually put a juga which you gotta kind of watch out in the winter time, guys. Uh, it got a little bit harsh there at Christmas time, so we ended up replacing these with Penta, which are again, another butterfly tractor. But this color actually, if you look from the street, um, it actually looks a lot better with the design. So you get a kind of a look here from back. It, it just looks so much better. It ties in with the purple. Um, just a really nice pop of color there. And then uh, again, if you can see the, uh, this is paver walkway we did in the fall. This is all concrete, so nice little walkway. Kind of mimic this same walkway in the back on the on the screen enclosure to have the same little uh, half moon pad. Look at these crepe myrtles, guys. This is purple magic. It's a wonderful crepe myrtle. Nice purple color, but it's a medium size. One only gets about seven feet tall. So it's a fantastic crepe myrtle to incorporate in your landscape if you're not looking for something really, really tall. But yeah, this turned out really well. I'm super, super pleased about how everything has grown in. Our maintenance is taking really good care of it. I mentioned that on Thursday on Facebook Live is that it's really important. You know, we, we want to do a great job on your landscape, but to keep it, the upkeep with landscape is super, super important. So our maintenance guys have done a fantastic job with just keeping up with fertilizing, pruning, taking really good care of these plants. It's super important that they continue to, to be successful. Again, I mentioned last week, yeah, I come back and ask people about their uh, how their plants are doing. How about the install from uh, from our our previous job? And they're like, well, we we fertilize the sod, we fertilize the uh, grass. What do we do for our plants? And it's really important that they get fed as well. So fertilizing is super important. As you can see, just having a really good maintenance program on these plants after the fact, uh, they they look really really good. 
So again, guys, this is our completed job at the Phillips residence. Front yard in the fall, backyard in the spring-ish summer. It's supposed to be closer to spring, but the pool got a little delayed. So, um, but completed job. I'm really pleased with it, and so are the homeowners. They really, they're going to be able to enjoy that backyard pool and this uh, beautiful front yard.